Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is a review of Drinking Quest Journey into Draft. So what is this? Well, it's a drinking game, as you could probably guess by the name. But you don't have to drink to enjoy it. However, there are several elements of the rules that do talk about this. But I want to stress, do drink responsibly. If you're going to play this and you're going to drink, do, you know, think about what you're drinking. Don't just drink nonsensically. But this is a pretty nonsensical game, to be honest. It's light, as you would expect from a drinking game. How does the game all work? Well, let's take it to the table. You will each take on the roles of a hero. And each hero has their own stats for their starting weapons, etc. And you can record all your coins, XP, on these sheets provided as you pick up stuff. Each player also starts with a signature drink, which is a special ability that they can use each quest. The way a quest works is you'll pick your first player and then they will turn over a card and try to complete whatever that card is. So you might have a monster to fight like this card here, where its HP is here, its attack is here, its defense is here, the coins you get for beating it and the XP you get for beating it. The way combat works is you each roll your attacks. So in this case, starting attack is a d6 for this guy. So he'd roll d6 and he'd roll a d4. You then minus the defense and neither has any defense at this point and that's how much damage they take. So Sir so Chugalot took four off of his eight, so he's down to four HP. And he did one damage, which with no defense is enough to take out the crappy loot. So he would gain the nine coins and one XP. If he had died, he would have died and the player would have to chug his drink. That's the drinking game nature of this. You don't have to do that. It is a choice whether or not you choose to do that. And it is important that you do drink responsibly and remember that it's just a game and don't take it too seriously, which all the cards support. The next player would then draw another card and you might have a challenge such as this. So to do a challenge, it'll tell you the type of challenge you need to do and you then roll all three dice. If the number you get is less than your stat for the challenge you're doing, so here we are doing a smarts challenge for this guy, so his smarts is 9 and we got 1, 2, 3, 5, so we passed. You get the success result. If you got more than, you'd get the fail result. And you keep taking turns, going through these cards, until you've gone through that full quest, at which point you get to visit the shop and players can spend their hard earned coins on various things and also their XP. Then you proceed on to the next quest and the game is made up of four quests. At the end of the game whoever has the most XP has won. So that is Drinking Quest, what do I think of it? Well let's start with the artwork. Uh, the box is very representative of the art in this game. It is not the best of art. It is very much kind of um, using stereotypical fantasy things. And yeah, it, it's okay. I kind of quite like it for its tunning cheekness. And that's what this game is totally throughout, is this tunning cheek kind of poking fun at the whole role play, D and D, RPG kind of fantasy tropes that people are used to so I kind of like that the fact that they've done that but yeah I mean the art isn't anything special to really write home about in this game um, neither's the graphic design you know it's it's it works it's functional and that's the thing this is a low price point game so it's not too surprising what about the components again as I say it's quite a low price point game so it's not too surprising you've got this little map here which is a nice little addition it comes with the dice and the pad for tracking things okay the cards are the main component and they're pretty cheap but let's face it if you're playing this as a drinking game you're probably playing it in pubs and there's going to be spilled drinks you don't want expensive components around that so this is exactly what you want for the game that it is so what is this game well 
it's an RPG. It is a tiny little RPG in a box. It'll take you one, maybe two hours, I would say. Kind of varies depending on how things go and really how drunk people get. But it's light, it's fun, it's humorous and that's what I like about it. It's the humour of the game, the, the poking fun of these stereotypical tropes. The actual gameplay itself is very basic. On your turn, you'll turn a card over and then you resolve it. If you die, you have to drink. That's it. And the whole game is just about building up XP. There's really not a lot to talk about. It's, it's simple, it's fun, it's jokey. If you like RPGs and you want to just have a bit of a joke about it with your friends and you know drunkenly roleplay your character and stuff, this is a game to do that with and you'll have a good time. How about scaling then? Well, it is two to four players because there are two to four heroes in the box and it scales perfectly great for that really. Um, a nice feature that I haven't mentioned yet is that it does come with some bonus quests that are kind of stylized. So you've got like these watercolor ones here um, and then there's also probably my favorite ones are the Mega Man themed ones. So that's pretty cool. Kegaman, sorry, it's Kegaman Returns, but it's very much these pixelated Mega Man themes. So yeah, um, basically, gameplay, you know, it's very random, as you'd expect, really. You know, everything pretty much comes down to dice rolls. There's no real decision making in this, which is probably a good thing if you're drinking, to be honest. It's a game to just have fun and see what happens with, rather than be thinking about and making decisions. So that is Drinking Quest, Journey into Draft. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and you have. Do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.